Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my Java algorithms tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover the second part of sorting algorithms inside of Java, and we're going to focus exclusively this time on the shell sort. Now, the shell sort is very similar to the insertion sort, which I covered previously, and I provide a link to the insertion sort tutorial above if you want to check that out. Now, the only difference is, is the shell sort has a new feature that's going to improve performance while at the same time, remaining pretty simple to use. And in fact, many experts believe one should always use the shell sort unless performance needs dictate the need for the much more complicated quick sort. Now on your screen, you actually can see the shell sort working. Now while the insertion sort is really fast if an array is almost sorted, problems can occur if, say, a small item is far to the right in an array. And the reason that is, is because all items in that situation would need to shift in the array to move the small item from the right to the left. Now, the shell sort solves this problem by partially sorting an array before then using the insertion sort to make sure everything's in order, as you can see here on the screen. And by partially sorting the array, this is going to eliminate the problems that occur occur if, for example, a small value is far to the right in the array. Now, in this 50-item array that you have here on the screen, the first items that are going to be compared to each other are going to have an interval of 40. We've now moved on to the interval of 13. What this interval means is that items that are 13 spaces apart from each other are going to be sorted in comparison to each other. Then, as you can see here, the interval between those values that are going to be sorted is going to shift to four spaces apart. And then, at this point, when interval is equal to one, we are actually going to use the insertion sort to move everything perfectly in order. And as you can see, now the items that are being shifted are just one space apart. And like I said before, this partial sorting is going to dramatically increase performance over just the basic insertion sort. So now that we've seen this in a graphical format, let's watch this process step by step. Now, like I said before, the shell sort partially sorts the array by sorting elements that are a certain number of spaces apart. And this number of spaces apart is known as an interval. Now, in this example that you see on our screen, all items are going to be sorted that are four spaces apart. And we are just simply going to step through the array, compare what is in index zero to what is in index four, and then compare what's in index one to what's in index five and sort just that small subpart of our array. Now, the index that is going to be farthest to the left is going to be referred to as the inner index, and then h in this situation is going to represent our interval, or number of spaces apart, and this is also known as the outer part of our array when using the shell sort. Now, you can see we're just simply going to step in here and exchange values in situations in which a value in a low index is higher than an item in a higher index. So here we compare 27 to 57 no reason to make a change there. Then we compare items in index 1 to 5. Here we need to make a change. So we are not going to move all these into place. We are just simply going to put the 34 down here and the 50 up here, just like that. Then we are going to compare items in index 2 to index 6. And in situations in which higher indexes have lower values, we're going to switch them, just like that. And then proceed to index 3 in comparison to 7. Switch. 4 to 8, switch, 5 to 9, switch, and now after we've completed this process, indexes 0, 4, and 8 are going to be sorted amongst themselves. And as you can see, 27, 42, and 57. Also, indexes 1, 5, and 9 are going to be properly sorted, as will items in 2, 6, and 3, and 7. Then after this process completes, we're just simply going to use a regular insertion sort, which is going to be very fast because everything's already partially sorted. So here we're just going to pop through in situations which we need to move numbers. We're going to store the lowest value number in a temporary variable and put it into place just like that. Then we'll compare index 0 to 2 and again move everything into place. 2 to 3, again store 22 in a temporary value and then move it down into place. Compare indexes 3 to 4, 4 to 5. Again, 5 to 6, store 13 in a temporary value, and then move it into place, right like that, and so forth, and so on, until every single item 
is properly sorted. So now that we've looked at the shell sort in a couple different ways, let's start writing some code. And all of the code in this video, as well as all the graphical things I'm using here are available in a link underneath the video if you want to play around with that little graphical tool with the bars and all that stuff. So just simply just going to come in here to find my shell sort object. And let's say that in this situation, to keep it simple, I'm just going to have 10 indexes inside of it. And then I'm going to print out a little bit of information so that we're going to actually be able to watch the shell sort actually work. Here we're going to call the shell sort, and I'm going to create that method here in a second, and there I'm just going to print out the arrays. Then down here in my constructor for my shell sort, I'm going to get my array size passed in, which is exactly what's going on right here, 10 indexes. Here I'm going to store the array size, create a new int array by passing array size in there, and then I created a method ahead of time that's going to generate a random array. Like I said, if you want to look at this, there's a code that is available inside the description. So there's all that. So now let's actually get into the shell sort and exactly how it works. Okay, so just like I talked about before, we're going to have inner, we're going to have outer, and we're going to have temp, all the things that you've already seen. Then I'm going to start interval off as one, and then I'm going to say while interval, and that's just the spaces between the different indexes that we're going to be comparing. I'm going to make sure that it's less than or equal to the array size divided by three. Then I'm going to define my interval sequence, and these can be different and very often will change depending upon the size of the array to improve performance. But this is a very common interval to start off with. And then I'm going to say that I want to keep looping as long as the interval is greater than zero. And this while loop is actually going to continue to run until this becomes an insertion sort, like I showed before in the diagrams. And then what I'm going to do is continue incrementing the index that I labeled previously as outer until the end of the array is reached. And that's quite simple. I just go outer is equal to interval while outer is less than array size. And here we'll just increment outer. Then I'm going to store the value of the array in temp unless it has to be copied to a space that was previously occupied by a bigger number closer to the beginning of the array. And I'm just going to throw outer inside of there in that situation. I'm also going to bounce up here real quickly, very top of this class, and define my array so we get rid of those little errors. And there we go. And then here, I'm going to put some information in here so we'll be able to actually track exactly how the shell sort is actually working. So I'm going to go the array outer into temp so that we know that that was stored in a temporary variable. Now inner is going to be assigned the value of the highest index to check against all values that precede it. And along the way, if a number is greater than temp, it will be moved up inside of our array. So just like that. And here I'm going to print out another message on the screen that's going to document exactly what's going on. And it's going to be checking if the array, this actually does a pretty good job of also commenting exactly what's going on, the array inner minus the interval in index inner minus interval is bigger than temp. And there we go. And then we're going to go while there is a number bigger than temp, move it further up in the array. And we'll do that by just going while inner is greater than interval minus one and the array with the index inner minus interval is greater than or equal to temp, we're going to continue switching these guys. And then once again, here I'm going to say in my while loop, and I'm checking if the array inner minus interval, again, just the distance between the different indexes that we're checking in index inner minus interval is bigger than and here we're going to compare this to temp, which is exactly what we're going to do. That guy there is just going to help me print out the screen, the array, and then I need to make room for the smaller temp by moving values in the array up one space if they're greater than temp. The array, enter, minus, interval. There again, I'm just going to print out the screen what's going on, and here I'm going to subtract interval from enter, print out the screen some information about what our array is doing, and there will be outer, there's temp, and there's interval. We're going to be able to watch this whole entire thing just totally crank out numbers and work. And then after we get out of there, now that everything has been moved into place, we just need to put the value stored in temp into the index above the first value that is smaller than it. And we're just going to go the array, enter is equal to temp. 
print out some more information on exactly what's going on here in our screen. And then once we get here, we know that we have interval sorted our array. So we just decrement interval and do it again, just like we showed in the graph where it went from 40 to 13, down to four, down to one. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna decrement the spaces between the indexes that are gonna be compared. And to do that, we just go interval is equal to interval minus one divided by three. And now that we have all that done, let's run this guy and watch it work. And as you can see, everything just sorts itself out. And if we look here at the very bottom, we can see that the final array is sorted. And I'm not going to go through this whole entire thing, but you can see here, I's represents inner, O represents outer. We're comparing these two. No reason to change. And there's all kinds of information about what's going on. And we compare 24 to 20 because those need to be changed. We move 24 up and then we move 20 down here, and so forth, and so on. So there is the shell sort looked at in numerous different ways. If you didn't quite catch anything, just go get the code, run the guy, and watch everything fall into place right in front of you in numerous different ways, and you'll get it. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.